everybody and i'm here and today we're going to be talking about magic with just random things uh, which includes a board game but also includes a regular deck of playing cards and some other props it's all done in the name of illustrating a scientific concept so today we're going to be talking about the trick that i entitled the polarization of light so let's go ahead and watch that and reflect Hi everybody, Nam here, and today we're going to be doing magic with a bunch of things, but our goal today is to try and demonstrate the concept of polarization. So what we have here is a regular deck of playing cards, and this is going to act as our polarizing light filter. And depending on how we fan the deck, that's going to be the orientation in which the polarizing light filter is oriented directionally. So this would be horizontal, and this would be vertical. And of course, I mentioned polarizing light filter, we have to have some light. So this is a photon card from the board game Subatomic, and this is actually going to act as our light for the experiment that we're going to do today. And then these, while they may look like pieces of cardboard, they're actually light polarizers. Deck of cards, legitimate actual deck of cards. The card that's from Subatomic, I'm only using one card. Could I actually claim that I'm doing a card trick with the board game? I'm tempted to say no. Maybe if a majority of the components were from the board game, I might be able to stretch it. But just using one card, I don't think I could really claim that I'm really doing a trick with that board game. And then these other things, these things that I'm calling the uh, light polarizers, they're actually random inserts that came from the booster packs from this card game called Star Wars Destiny. And they're weirdly shaped because the card game wasn't just card game. It was a card game that had dice. And so the cards would go inside of the cardboard. And then the little square that's cut out, or diamond, depending on your orientation, that was where the die was supposed to be. Now, these things are notoriously bad because the die would not actually stay fitted into that slot. As you can imagine, booster packs, they move around and things. So um, they ended up just kind of at least keeping the card safe, but otherwise the die would just... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I used two of them here. I cut them slightly differently just so I can slide cards through, but you'll see how I do that in a sec. So the likelihood that you find light out in the open that is already polarized is pretty low. So if you get unpolarized light and you place it through a filter, you'll pretty much be able to see it. Doesn't matter how we orient the polarizing light filter. It's going to stick out it's going to be pretty evident exactly where it is, whether we orient it horizontally or vertically. You're going to be able to see it. So here's the thing. We do have polarizing light filters. OK, so up until this point, we're almost at two minutes, which is like half of the trick. And nothing has actually happened yet. I'm actually just telling the story. I feel like for explaining a scientific concept, I want to at least explain it the best that it, I know how to explain it, whether this is 100% accurate or not. I mean, I would not use this as a replacement for actual scientific education, but uh, hopefully it's close enough that um, it could possibly pass as something that is like, hey, that's a cool illustration or a nice visual of, of how light polarization works. But uh, anyway, so let's grab this one. And this one is our vertical polarizing light filter. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run our photon through it. There we go. Believe it or not, this is now polarized light. Uh, whether you believe that or not, uh, it's probably easier for me to show you as a demonstration. But basically, now if I go ahead and show you that the light is vertically polarized, you should not be able to see it through a horizontal polarizing light filter. So it's not evident. It's still there, but it's actually mostly being blocked because of the orientation. But because it's vertical, if we go ahead and place the polarizing light filter vertically, you will be able to see it 
pretty obviously. It's right there. There's the first actual technical phase. Um, I was disappointed at one little thing that happened in there, but otherwise I think it flowed okay. And I didn't mess up as badly as some of the other takes. So I was super frustrated with this because there was so much introduction that I would have to go through every time. And I didn't want to rush through it every time, but like the more that I did this one, right? So a trick that takes like one minute, if you have to do it like a dozen times, that's just 12 minutes, right? This one was four minutes. So if you had to do this one a dozen times, it'd be like 48 minutes. So I was like, okay, I have to take a take that is like good enough. But unfortunately, it wasn't uh, as perfect as I would have liked here. But I think this was good enough. So now we've done that, but we can polarize light the other way as well. So look, this is actually a horizontal polarizing light filter. So now if I run the photon through that, now we have a horizontally polarized light. We have horizontally polarized light. And now we can go ahead and once again do our experiment. But this time you should only be able to see it in the situation when the filter is oriented horizontally. Because now, if I show you, if I go vertical, it is not evident and it's not immediately visible. It's still there, but because it's oriented in the other direction horizontally, you will be able to see it here. It's very obvious, right? It's right there. All right, and hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that second phase I thought was a lot better than my first phase, and I did that one pretty clean, so I was pretty happy with that. And hopefully it illustrates uh, the potential weirdness of polarization of light just a little bit. But So I had this idea a long time ago. I even had this idea even before I did the Fantastic Four trick, but I wanted to do this one at some point but i was so like impassioned by the fantastic four one that i was like let me get that one out first um but this one is based on a very simple slight concept and i did it twice just with in different ways to achieve the uh you know the vertical horizontal thing but if uh, if you are familiar with it um yeah it, like technically it is not that difficult the hard part was presenting the trick right as a scientific concept that was the most difficult part of this and um making sure that you know i say the right things and i do the correct thing because it would have been embarrassing if i was like explaining one thing and it's like it was supposed to be the horizontal one but i did the vertical one instead so it's like okay let me make sure that that was consistent um so at the end of the day i could easily do this trick and probably like a minute and a half, two minutes, if I'm just, just gonna be like, all right, polarization of light, if you just wanted to see, okay, horizontally polarized, go, <laughs> and then vertically polarized, go. And it would just be a lot simpler, right? But um, at the time of putting this together, I was just like, okay, let me try and do the trick and actually see if it's valuable, which if anybody looks at my YouTube statistics, nobody finds valuable. So I'm like, all right, at least if I get it out there, some people will watch it. And I assume the people who are watching it will either find some value in it or find some entertainment, but it's not going to be like the kick-ass magic trick that teaches people science. Like it's not going to be that, uh, especially because I only have one. I'm not planning on doing any more unless I'm super inspired by stuff, which, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe not, but uh, I do want to do more magic for the time being. Um, I'm just going to do what I want. Honestly, if you've never seen my entire channel grow from like, it was like a movie review channel because I worked at a video store. And then I did 8-bit video games for a little while, explaining some of the weird 8-bit video games that I had on like a Famicom cartridge to like card game and board game tutorials and strategy segments, which that was like, I was really passionate about that because I love those. And actually some of those videos were like some of my best performing videos. Like if it wasn't for that stuff, my channel wouldn't be monetized. The thing is I get so little uh, from YouTube that, I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I have a full-time job. So, you know, I just, I don't think I care enough to want to make money here to replace my job, 
but it's nice to just get like a little bonus once in a while. But honestly, it's just, I would never want to do any content that I don't want to do. Even though my channel doesn't have a real identity, the identity truly is me doing the stuff that I like and sharing it with people. Honestly, I have been losing subscribers because I know a lot of my subscribers that got me to the point in which I was monetized was from the card game, board game strategy segment and tutorials. But uh, at the end of the day, if you don't like me <laughs> or what I'm doing, then this is not really the channel for you. But if you do, this is great. But I want to use YouTube as a place in which I have fun. <laughs> and I never want to get to the point where anybody is dictating to me what to do, or I have to do my channel a certain way. It's like, that's kind of going to be my mindset. I never want this to be a job. I just want this to be my hobby. <laughs> and I'm having fun doing it. I'm having fun doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> and it's fine. Um, but anyway, at the end of the day, yeah, polarization of light. I do believe in like science education. I think that is important. And I think people should learn about things. And I think people should get an understanding of what they don't understand and be open to different viewpoints and the discourse and discussion between people of different opinions. And I think that's all important. And, you know, some people will agree and others won't. If I'm just doing magic, I'm doing it for entertainment. And like, I don't expect any grandiose thing to happen with sleight of hand magic. But if I entertained you, then I'd say it was worth it. So anyway, if you're still watching, and honestly, if you watch these vlogs or even just listen to them, because honestly, there's not much to watch. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I totally appreciate it. And hopefully you guys find some value or interest out of it. But um, Well, that got a little personal. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. You have a glorious day. Thanks for watching.